Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In my recent video, I mentioned that we're doing some renovation throughout the house. And in that video, I showed you guys how we wall mounted the TV in our bedroom. And in today's video, we're gonna tackle something slightly different. This day and age, there's a good chance that you have a lot of smart connected devices in the house. Whether it's your smartphone, a tablet, TV, you name it, chances are it's probably connected to the internet. And to connect all these devices, there's a good chance that you're using Wi-Fi. And the thing about Wi-Fi is that depending on how big your house is and how many walls you have in the way, there's probably a place within the house that does not get good enough signal. As a result, you get unreliable connection and everything that comes along with that. In this project, I'm gonna be revamping the home network in our house. Most of you probably get your Wi-Fi through the little modem that your service provider provides you. Chances are that you're probably paying a monthly fee for that since you're essentially just renting that equipment. Now that equipment has to go somewhere in your house and it has to be pretty much equidistant from everywhere within your house. And generally that equipment can be a little messy. There's wires coming in, there's wires going out, there may be antennas attached to it. So it's not a pretty thing. In our house, that place is right behind our sofa in the upstairs living room. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of antennas. I actually have a lot more equipment than what I just mentioned so far. I'll go through all of that in a bit. Now, obviously this is not very aesthetically pleasing, but it gets the job done. It actually gives me good Wi-Fi throughout the house. However, in this project, I'll be cleaning up this mess. One thing to keep in mind is that no matter how good your Wi-Fi connection is, it's never gonna be as good as a wired ethernet connection. Now, I was very envious of everyone that has new houses with all the ethernet cable run throughout the house. But recently, I discovered something within our house that's a total game changer. And chances are, your house also has it. If you have a relatively old house, chances are you have all these little phone jacks throughout the house. And it turns out in our house, these jacks are actually using ethernet cable. And these cables run all the way up to the attic. And that's perfect for what I wanna do. Now the key to making this project work out is to make sure that we have it all planned out on paper first before we go out and buy anything. So here's the plan. So we have all these rooms. I'm gonna indicate three of these rooms. And I have ethernet cable going into the attic from all these rooms. Now what I'm gonna do is put a patch panel in the attic to indicate which port goes to which room and I'm gonna have them labeled. And then I'm also gonna run a bunch of cables from another patch panel into another attic that I have right above the garage. Now this attic is actually adjacent to a little closet we have and I'm gonna put all the equipment in there. So I'm actually gonna run all these cables into there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect all the necessary patch cables to connect each corresponding connection to the other side. The wireless component of this is actually gonna be very different. What I'm actually gonna do is actually run a cable into the ceiling from the second floor and put an access point on the ceiling. And I'm gonna put a second access point right in our dining room, which is actually adjacent to this garage attic that I have. So that's the overall plan. Now what I need to buy are these access points, these patch panels, and all the cabling. The first thing we need to do in this video is actually convert all these phone jacks into ethernet jacks. Now although you don't need to be an expert to do this, I did have to look it up on YouTube just to make sure I do it right. And you do need a special tool to punch down the cable into the keystone jacks. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. Now this is the room where I have my workstation computer and unfortunately this room does not have a phone jack for me to convert into an ethernet jack. What I'm currently doing is actually running a cable along the walls, this gray one right there, all the way to the living room where my network equipment is. Now what I'm hoping to do is take this coax cable which I don't have a use for and use this as a fishing wire to pull the new cable through to the attic. Let's see if that worked. Now the first thing I did was tape the new wire with the coax cable with duct tape to make sure it's secure. Then I went into the attic and started pulling. It did take a little bit of a force but it did come through. Now be careful when you're walking around in the attic. Make sure you know to not step on drywall because that could be very dangerous. So that worked out pretty well. Now I have an ethernet jack in this room. 
I got three of these very inexpensive 12 port patch panels, two are gonna go in the attic and one will go in the closet where I'll be putting the network equipment. A patch panel is essentially a little device where you punch in all the cables coming in from the different rooms into one single place for easy access. To punch in the cables into the patch panel you need the same tool that was used to punch in the keystone jacks. Now this process takes a little bit of time so make sure you're comfortably seated and have some patience. This patch panel comes with a wall mount kit which is what I used to mount it onto a stud in the attic. Then I labeled the ports and mounted the second bracket to there as well. I then started cutting out 50 foot pieces of ethernet cable. I actually need 12 of these and these will be run from the attic into the network closet. Once I had all 12 lined up I started bundling them together because it's much easier to handle one bundle as opposed to all of them individually. It was then time to go back up into the attic and start bringing the ethernet cables with me. This turned out to be a task on its own because turns out 50 feet of ethernet cable is a lot of cables. I then started running the cables from the main attic into the other attic above the garage. It was then time to punch in the new cables into the other patch panel I have in the main attic. Once again, this is a little tedious and does take a little bit of patience. I then went on to patch the two patch panels with small patch cables. These are all the cables on the other side in the garage attic. Then I started making the hole on the drywall to bring in the cables. Now this process is very similar to what I had to do for the TV mounting. First use a template to draw it out, then cut the drywall, then start feeding the cables. I forgot to mention I also had to run a coax cable from the attic because that's what my ISP uses for the modem. Now that I have all the cables run through the wall, it was time to install a little wall plate so it looks a little bit organized. And this is the same process as what I had to do to mount the TV and run the cables through the drywall there. It was now time to punch in the other end of these cables into another patch panel that will be going into this room. Now at this point I realized if I just put the patch panel backwards onto the mounting bracket it was a lot easier to punch in the cables than to hold it in my hands. Although punching in the cables was the same process as the other two, this time around it felt a lot more comfortable simply because I was in a room rather than an attic and also because I flipped the patch panel backwards. After I had everything punched in, it was time to flip it back to the normal side and put it back onto the bracket. It was then time to test the cabling to make sure every connection is correct. I was using a device called a Fluke and it's very expensive so I borrowed this one for this project. It's now time to tackle the wireless portion of this networking project. Now I got these Ubiquiti Unify access points. These are slightly older models that were relatively cheaper than some of the newer ones that are out there. But for my specific needs, these should be perfectly fine. The best thing about these is that not only is it discreet, it also uses power over ethernet so you don't actually need to plug into a power plug. And that's perfect for my needs because I'm trying to go for that minimalistic look within the house. I'll put Amazon links to these as well as all the newer ones that are out there that way you can pick and choose whichever works best for you. I actually got two of these access points. The first one I'll be mounting on the ceiling on the second floor. Once I identified where I want to place it, I started drilling small holes to put the screws into the bracket. I then put on the bracket and put the screws in all the way. I then went into the attic and started mounting the back plate for this. Now the back plate is only necessary if you're ceiling mounting it rather than wall mounting it. And in this case I did need it and I had to put the screws on from the back. I ran an ethernet cable to this location in the attic and then I drilled a small hole to feed the cable through the ceiling. I then went back downstairs and put the cable into the access point and mounted the access point on the bracket. Shortly after I saw a light blinking on the access point that meant that it was getting power so all the cable run was successful. I then proceeded to mount the second access point and this one was a wall mount so it was a little easier. The back of this wall is actually into the garage attic that I have all the cables running to so it was a short cable run to the little patch panel in the closet. Just as I had to do for the other access point I drilled a small hole to run the ethernet cable through the wall. And once again I plugged in the ethernet cable to the access point and mounted it to the bracket. Now it's time to move the equipment into the networking closet. 
The first thing I did was move the UPS in there, which is what will be providing power to everything. Then I connected the modem, then the router. Now I disconnected all the antennas from the Asus router because I'll no longer be using the wireless component of this. Then I went on to connect the router to the modem. After that, I connected a small 8 port switch to the router. After that, I brought in my home server and started connecting all the equipments together. Most of the connections happen through the patch panel since all the equipment is in different rooms throughout the house, with the exception of the home server which is connected directly to the switch since it's physically in the same room. This is the final product, although I'll be upgrading some of the network equipment to Ubiquiti equipment, but that's something for a different video altogether. Going back to the living room where all the equipment was, I've put a floating shelf there and put some decors on top of it to cover up all the outlets. And the space underneath it, I plan on putting some storage cabinets to make room for some storage. This is still a work in progress and I'm sure it will look a lot different once we have everything completed. As you can see, the photos aren't even of us, it's still the random photos that come with the frame. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and I hope to bring more of these videos down the road.